All right, uh, you know, let's also bring in Guru Prakash Paswan, who's now joining us live. Uh, Guru Prakash Paswan, you know, the debate practically right now is uh, two very different narratives. One, the BJP trying to build in the south and the Congress trying to build in the north of India. Um, and there seemed to be a deficit, at least uh, on both parts, the Congress facing in the north, what the BJP is facing in the south. Uh, Preeti, a very warm good evening to you and my fellow panelists. But we need to understand a couple of things first. That uh, as far as uh, BJP in South is concerned, it's not news to us. We have had a remarkable presence in South of India. We have had a president from South India uh, for the party, uh, Mr. Jana Krishnamurti, Mr. Venkaiah Naidu. Today, the Honorable uh, Finance Minister, the Honorable Foreign Minister, they come from South of India. In uh, Puducherry, we have our ministers. We have... Uh, uh, in alliance, in uh, sharing power in Puducherry, in uh, Telangana, we have four members of parliament. In Telangana, we have 14% uh, percent of votes. In Karnataka, we have the largest share of member of parliament. And Karnataka, as we all know, it's a cyclical election in 2024, which is going to be a watershed year. We are going to see the onset of the Bharatiya Janata Party in South as well. But we don't necessarily buy this argument. This is an argument of fault line on which the Congress party thrives, on which the Congress party survives. Kabi north-south, kabi east-west, kabi Dalit OBC, kabi Hindu-Muslim. But for the Bharatiya Janta Party, Preeti, let me make this very clear. 140 crore people of India, north-south, hindu Muslim, Dalit, Samanya, Brahman, Pandit, all of them are Indian first and Indian lastly. We don't buy this argument at all. I agree to you. I agree with you when you say that the Bharti Janata Party in terms of political representation has not made a significant impact. But 2024, it's going to be a watershed year. We have had four MLAs in Tamil Nadu as well. The amount of focus, we saw a Kashi Tamil Sangamam. We saw a Saurashtra Tamil Sangamam. We saw a symbol of civilizational heritage, the Sengal in the new parliament building as well. So I don't necessarily, we don't necessarily buy this argument of a north-south divide. It is the Congress party that survives and thrives on this. But Bharatiya Janata Party, it is matter of oneness, it is matter of one India. All right, you know, but that might be, you know, what uh, is it for the Bharatiya Janata Party? And I want to bring in Ashutosh back into this conversation. But the fact is, Guru Prakash Paswan, you won only 29, which you concede, where political representation is concerned of the 303 seats. And whether one likes it or not, if you're going to look at it politically, there is a very clear north-south di divide, electorally speaking. And that has to be looked at. Um, Ashutosh, I want to bring you back into the conversation, taking off from what Amitabh Tiwari said. You know, the problem, is it, the, you know, what we were discussing, BJP's problem in the south has been the Congress's problem in the north, that is regional strong leadership. The Prime Minister cuts it, sweeps the Hindi heartland, but that ticket doesn't carry south of the Hindias. See, uh, Preeti, uh, let me give you a few figures. In five states, uh, that is Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Andhra and Punjab, 114 seats, BJP could win only 7 seats. So the, the BJP strike rate in these states is less than 7%. If you add Odisha, then out of 135 seats, BJP could win only 14 seats. Their strike rate is approximately 11%. If you add Maharashtra and uh, uh, Bihar, out of 223 seats, BJP could win only 59 seats. The strike rate is less than 30%. These are BJP's problem areas. And I'm uh, uh, let me say this with a little audacity, that in parliamentary elections, Congress is drawing a blank, but Congress vote share in these states are not less than 30%. Where the BJP does not have a 30% vote share in Kerala, nor in Punjab, nor in Tamil Nadu, nor in Telangana, neither in Andhra Pradesh, and in Punjab, these, these are the states. In Bihar and in Maharashtra, till now, I'm not, what is going to happen in the future, I do not know. But in these, Bihar and, and, uh, uh, and, and Maharashtra, in Bihar, BJP has failed to score 30 per, to get 30 percent vote share. When okay. it contested alone in 2014, their vote share was something around 23 point something some percentage. So okay, 
So if you if you go by these numbers, okay. All right, Guru Prakash Paswan. All right, you you made your point, Ashutosh. Let me bring in. Do you do you concur, Mr. Paswan? No, uh, Preeti, I think uh, this argument of vote share is a very convenient argument. If I can go back to 2004, which uh, our Congress friends are very fondly remembering. In 2004 parliamentary election, our uh, senior journalist friend Ashutosh Ji would very well remember that the vote share of Bharatiya Janata Party was higher than the Congress party. The seat difference was also a very marginal difference. So this argument is of very, uh, your, if it suits your convenience, you will take this argument. Otherwise, you won't take this argument. Ashutosh Ji, in Bihar, last parliamentary election, out of 40 parliamentary seats, the NDS scored 39. In 2014, uh, we saw 32. In 2009, we saw 30. So this is not an argument uh, that works. In 2020, assembly election of Bihar as well, we have emerged as the second largest party. So, a vote share ka argument is a very convenient argument which we don't necessarily buy. But if you look at South of India, I was looking at the figure from Karnataka Preeti. In 2004, we had 18 members of parliament in Karnataka as well. So, historically also, like I said, we have had national presidents of Bharatiya Janata Party from South. We have had a Jana okay. Krishnamurti ji, we have had a Bangaru Lakshman ji, we have had a Venkaiya Naidu ji. So, just to say this very flatly, that South mein BJP is not in South, mein BJP ka presence is okay. very marginal, hai, we don't necessarily buy this argument. Most important two crucial portfolios today. And we are okay. proud to say that Mr. Subramaniam Jayashankar right. comes from Tamil Nadu. Okay, Madam Aishwarya Mahadev. Okay, comes Aishwarya from Tamil Mahadev. The All right, not so much Tamil electorally, the but the BJP is at least speaking the language to garner the vote from a you know a, a pocket which they consider weak, and they've been doing it. You know the uh, examples given right there uh, by Guru Prakash Paswan, be it the Sengol or even the Ramlala, uh, you know the Murti, which is going to be coming in from Karnataka. You know, symbolism, symbolism and platitudes are well and good, but when issues of development come by, the South gets massively ignored by the central government, and I'll tell you how, right? Before the Karnataka elections, you saw massive, like, announcements, whether it was the Badra project, whether it was the metro announcement, uh, metro inauguration, and we saw a whole bunch of, like, basically a tour of the South, and especially Karnataka, by all the leadership that was there. Right after the Karnataka elections, and after the BJP's decimation, how much is the flood relief that my state has asked for, and for drought relief, because you've seen massive, unprecedented crop losses this year, and you saw that the central government did not listen to them. Okay. You've also seen, even in the south, even in Chennai, how much of the relief after the floods have come for them? Zero. You've also seen, whether it is devolution of the finance commissions, you see that the south consistently loses out, including where you put terms of, you know, TOR, such as saying the you incentivize states that have less population control, while the south has okay. basically... That right. replacement level of population. You basically have to put your money where your mouth is and actually right. okay, last... have to will. I'm, I'm, I'm taking last during elections for electioneering. All that right, okay. Closing, closing comments, Guru, pa uh, Guru Paswan, 20 seconds, sir. Then I'm going to cut across to the <laughs> other panelists. Go ahead. Yeah, so so th this is this uh, argument is completely beyond my comprehension because the data suggests something else. If you look at the data, the NDA government in the last nine years have given 2.5 times more money than the UPA one and UPA two combined. 10 lakh crore has been spent on railways and road. And uh, for your kind information, for the kind information of the viewers, Tamil Nadu is a state with a debt of 8 okay. lakh crore. What is the model of development? We don't understand. Infrastructure, right, you know, okay. investment, connectivity, airports, railways, roads, port. It is the Bharatiya Janata Party and the NDA All which right. has made the okay, South you know, data is something which Guru Prakash Paswan, you, you yourself stated, can be read as per convenience. So, Aishwarya Mahadev, sorry, I've run out of time, Aishwarya, that you are reading it out and that charge can also be leveled at Mr. Paswan's doorstep. But bringing in both our political panelists, 20 seconds closing, uh, Amitabh Tiwari, very clue, you know, very two different narratives. Closing comments, sir. The South look South policy of the BJP and Nyai through the heartland of India. See, the BJP is trying to expand its its presence and tally in the southern India, and it is giving a, a push, different messages in different states depending upon the target audience. One thing we need to understand is that there is a management principle of 80-20. 80% of results come from 20% of outcomes. BJP has applied this in the Lok Sabha election. 80% of his seats come okay. from 20% of the states. So only six states, and which includes West and uh, okay. Eastern India and Southern India as well, account for 188 seats. UP, okay. Maharashtra, 
राजस्थान गुजरात एमपी कर्नाटका 188 सीट्स आउट ऑफ 300 ओके कम फ्रॉम दी सिक्स स्टेट्स इटसेल्फ और आज तो 20 सेकंड्स वी गोना क्लोज द शो सी BJP always think and I rightly say that the Congress is the biggest threat to the BJP for the simple reason because in 2000 okay. uh, because if you look at the figures in 2012 BJP was only having 15% vote share in UP within 2 years BJP jumped from 15% to 42% and the seat was okay. 73 in, in in and BJP in 2009 has all India base only 7 crores And All the BJP right. uh, Congress, despite okay. the worst performance, is still maintaining 10 to 11 percent. You never All know right. when okay. this 10 to 12 percent is going to be 15 percent and 16 percent. Like right. BJP's vote share jumped from 7 crore to 17 right. crore in. But many would say that might be a tall ask right now, Ashutosh. But I, I, you know, uh, the debate is open. We're going to leave it at that. Uh, you know, we've run out of time. Appreciate all our panelists for joining us.